What's up guys, in this video I'm gonna show you a plugin that can really enhance your UK garage drums. It's a plugin that I've used a lot for my drums and if you've seen some of my other videos, I think you'll know what plugin it is. This video is great for you if you want to add some extra character and vibe to your drums. And stick around for the end of the video, I have a small present for you. So enough talking, let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so we're gonna turn this rather basic drum loop It's something really awesome. And it's done with this plugin, Guitarix 6. So if you haven't watched any of my previous video, Guitarix 6 is a multi-effects processor with a lot of different components, reverb, delays, amplifiers, phasers, a lot of stuff. And basically what you do is that you can just browse all of these components, effects components, and just drag them into this effect rack. So you can just build really awesome, cool, unique effect chains. And we're gonna do that for our drums. So I want to use Guitarix 6 on the individual drum elements. So I have a top loop, some claps, rim shot, and a right loop. So if we start with the claps, I want to add some curls, and I want to use curl. This is really great for adding like vintage style curls. Like the feedback and the scatter function really adds something unique to this sound. And you can even choose between these different modes here. I really like this ensemble one, so I think I'm just gonna crank down the mix knob a little bit. It gives it a little bit more of like a metallic kind of vibe to it. Next, I want to add a little bit of distortion and some bit reduction with this byte component. So I'm just gonna reduce the frequency range here and then the bit depth here to 12. Add a little bit of crunch, a little bit of jitter, and then I'm gonna crank up the saturation a bit. So let's have a listen. So basically it just makes the clap a little bit more gritty. And then lastly, I want to add some psych delay, but it's just really, really short of delay time. Or even pitch it down. And then the key here is to just have a little bit of mix. So around 15%. Okay, so I think for the clap, this is enough. And just to make sure, because we added some components that could generate some low end rumble, and we just pull up an EQ and remove that. Awesome. Next, we have a hi-hat loop, or actually a top loop. I want to add some a phaser. Then I think I want to have it a little bit quick. So put up the rate. then also a little bit of the feedback and I think adds a little bit of stereo width. I think this effect is really great, but I just want to reduce the wet knob a little bit because I don't want it to be too much. Just want to add like a subtle modulation to the top loop. Next, we can add a little bit of vintage reverb and I think I want like this dub spring reverb. Just really so. And next we want to add a little bit of auto panning and we can do that by adding this split here all the way to A and then we can also make this knob here. And in Guitar Rig 6, you can actually add modifiers, LFOs or step sequences that can automate some of the knobs and parameters in, in, in Guitar Rig 6 and that's pretty awesome to do stuff with. So we're just gonna add an LFO and we can set this to a random, assign it to this panning knob here. I think I'm gonna crank up the rate a little bit and then we can actually adjust how much of the amount is gonna be assigned to the LFO, so just a little bit. Then we will actually put a transient master and reduce the sustain a little bit and up with the attack. It's a great way to control like that reverb that we added, so it's not gonna be like too long and su too sustained, but we still have that really nice modulation to the sound. So I think this is like really great for the hi-hats. Let's move on to the rim shots. Here I want to add like a tape echo style delay. Put this beat to 
here and I want it to like be fast done with the feedback and then this like treble knob here you can actually pull up like so the higher frequencies of the delays are being more present and in this tape echo component you can actually introduce a little bit of vintage style reverb just a little bit and then I'm gonna dial back the treble a little bit the bass all the way down nice for this one I want to add like an auto filter and then we can actually add an auto filter just before the tape echo and then we can pull down the attack a little bit and then I want to re reduce the mix then have it like more like a low pass style I think this is great and then I want to add like a grain delay also put up the pitch and then I want to like remove some of the low end and also some of the high end. Maybe we should try to reverse this grain delay. Just to add some fluttering. Pretty dope. And then lastly, I want to add the bite again. Also cranking down the frequencies up with this knob here and crunch saturation and then high pass filter to around 200. Just to add like this lo-fi kind of vibe that I'm really, really a big fan of. Okay, so the last component we're gonna mess around with is the rides. And here I want to add like a tremolo effect. And you can choose to have it like synced to a tempo, but I don't want to do that because I want like it to be like a little bit more random. You can also play around with the stereo knob here. I think this is cool. And then you have like the intensity. Intensity and I won't think around here. And here we can use the modifiers to do something really cool rhythmically. So you can use the step sequencer and we can go grab Traxxas Digital Lo-Fi. So if you have something like this. But we only want it to play when the step sequencer is playing. So we're going to turn down the mix knob. And then we can make like a, a rhythmic kind of effect here like this. And then we can assign this to the mix knob. So if we pay, take a listen here. We can increase the decay, so we get a little bit more of the effect. It's just to add some subtle changes to the ride loop. And then I think we're going to play around with the ring modulator. I have no idea what this component does, but I really like the, the sound of it. Okay, and then we can actually increase the volume a little bit. I'm just going to do that with this compressor. And then we're going to add an EQ again, just to remove some unwanted low end. Okay, so let's have a listen to the whole drum loop with all of the effects from Guitar X6. And now without the Guitar X6 plugins. Wait again. So as you can hear, it's adding a lot of unique character and vibe to your drums. And it's just a matter of playing around with the different components that's inside Guitar X6. I really love all of the modulation capabilities that you have within Guitar X6. And it's just really awesome to process drums with this plugin. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I really hope it inspired you to jump into Guitar X6 and process your drums in a really like creative and unfashioned way because you can get really awesome and unique results. As promised, I have a present for you guys. It is some free samples and presets that you can get on my web shop. The link is in the description down below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, it would mean so much to me if you could smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, peace.